Mark Benioff and Sam Altman discussed the future of AI on stage at Dreamforce, and I have three main takeaways to share. Make sure you stick around until the end, and I'll share a bonus clip revealing the paradoxical thought that AI hallucination is actually a good thing. Overall, I think the discussion could have been more engaging and the dynamic was just off in a way I couldn't quite put my finger on, but I'll link the full video in the description if you want to check it out. The theme seemed to be a reiteration that AI is a big deal and that the future is unknown in specifics, but that the future will be seeped in AI in all areas of our lives. That said, what are the takeaways? The first is about the next big step for OpenAI and AI in general. Here's what Sam had to say about that. What's the next big step for OpenAI to kind of get to where you want to get it to? Uh, two things. One, on this current hill that we're climbing with the technology of the GPT series, we're going to keep making it better. We'll make it more reliable, more robust. Um, more multimodal, better at reasoning, all of these things. You know, we're now deep into the phase of the enterprise really adopting this technology um, and getting the systems to be very secure, very highly trusted, handle data appropriately, uh, not hallucinate, or at least not when you don't want them to hallucinate. That's leading to enormous transformation for a lot of companies, and we want to keep doing that. And then the other thing we're going to do is figure out the remaining research from this paradigm we're in right now to something that we could all truthfully call AGI. To recap, enterprise acceptance of the technology and understanding how to leverage it in a trusted and secure way is the current step. Continued research towards AGI, artificial general intelligence, is the more long-term future of AI. The second takeaway is about the nature of AI in the enterprise or the expected relationship between corporations and AI in the near future. Here's what Sam had to say about that. The models are going to get dramatically more capable. It will be dramatically more customizable and dramatically more reliable. Continue to build the features around the model, uh, like we were talking about earlier for enterprise class usage. Um, and we'll continue to build consumer products like ChatGPT to make it easier for people to just start playing around. But in the same way that the internet and then mobile just kind of seeped everywhere, that's gonna happen with intelligence. And, you know, right now, people talk about being an AI company. And there was like a time after the iPhone App Store launch where people talked about being a mobile company. But no software company says they're a mobile company now because it would be like unthinkable to not have a mobile app. And it'll be unthinkable not to have intelligence integrated into every product and service. It'll just be an expected obvious thing. This will be a big shift in terms of how we interact with the world and with technology. I think this is a pretty good point. So just like mobile became inevitable for all businesses, so too AI will become inevitable for all businesses. Now, Salesforce has currently positioned itself as a leader of incorporating AI into an enterprise software. If it is inevitable that all businesses will do this in some way in the near future, this will only be a differentiator for a short time. I'd love to get your take on this as well, so please leave a comment on what you think about this. The third takeaway was all about what future AI models could look like. What does a dramatically more capable model look like? Here's what Sam had to say about that. What is a dramatically more capable model? Can you try to describe it to us? I think it'll happen in all sorts of different ways, but one example, a lot of people use ChatGPT to help them program. And you know, maybe they say, hey, it writes 25% of my code. Uh, and then it'll get up to 50, and then 75, and then 87 and a half, and then 90, and then 95. And at some point, it's not just doing more code, but it's letting you do things you just couldn't do before. Um, there's, uh, you know, I, I'm a big believer that quantitative shifts lead to qualitative shifts at some point. And so if you have better tools, if you can operate at a higher level of abstraction, if you can keep more of the, the big picture problem in your mind at one point, you can just do dramatically more. We could like reach back into history for an example. And if you think about the kinds of problems that a programmer let him or herself dream about when they were working with punch cards versus what you can think about with a high level language of today, 
versus what you can think about, where you can just say in natural language, this is what I want a program to do. I don't know, how about this? Actually, that's a really interesting idea that I just saw emerge here. How about this? Um, and the, the cycle time in the, 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 the sort of iterative feedback loop is so different than it is today. Uh, that will change what a single programmer is capable of. That will change what a single person running a one-person company is capable of. And I'm tremendously excited to see. I think this is pretty cool. The cycle time of creating something from ideation to actual product will dramatically shorten, and this will have huge implications across the board. Now for the bonus that I've promised. Why does AI hallucination exist, and how could it be a good thing? Here's what Sam has to say about that. What's been the most complex part of dealing with the hallucination problem? One of the sort of non-obvious things is that a lot of the value from these systems comes is heavily related to the fact that they do hallucinate. You know, if you just want to look something up in a database, we already have good stuff for that. But the fact that these AI systems can come up with new ideas, can be creative, uh, that's a lot of the power. Now, you want them to be creative when you want and factual when you want, and that's what we're working on. But, you know, if you, if you just sort of do the naive thing and say, never say anything, that you're not 100% sure about. You can get a model to do that, but it won't have the magic that people like so much if you do it the naive way. Okay, what seems certain? AI is here to stay. What is uncertain? The specifics of how AI will be woven into the current structures. How should you react to the inevitable changes that are looming? You can do nothing, or you can prepare and equip yourself, which is what I would recommend. Stay tuned for more Dreamforce recaps or Salesforce and AI guidance, and please leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you again next time.